Syria front and center. Investors fearful and selling. Fox on top of a world on edge. Britain's Prime Minister David Cameron recalling Parliament to discuss Syria. Warplanes reportedly spotted in Cyprus, hinting of an imminent attack on Syria. Russia and China warning against any strike on Syria. Stocks plunging. Oil surging. Gold prices soaring. As anyone worth their security salt continues meeting and weighing, is now the time the U.S. puts an end to all the talking and do something. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And John McCain long ago argued Syria had crossed that red line. Now signs this very hour the president of the United States agrees and is ready to act. The senator in a moment on the potential fallout if this means war. First to market watcher Scott Martin on the very real fallout for investors, even if it does not. Scott, what the heck happened today? Well, Neil, it was not pretty. And really, this has been going on now for a couple of days. The market is skittish. I mean, we all know the economy is very on very, very shaky ground, very weak shape. And so now you're seeing, Neil, as you mentioned in the lead in, the rising commodity prices, both on the gold, silver, and metals complex. More importantly, oil, Neil, up three bucks a barrel today, near year to date highs. That takes a lot of money out of the consumer's pockets. Just a few cent rise at the pump can take billions with a B out of the U.S. economy. But you know, as you often remind me, Scott, oil is traded like a commodity. It's not based on supply and demand, more like fear and greed. And so if, if, if the perception is that we could see a disruption in oil supplies out of the Middle East, that's all these guys need. Are they, and do you think they are, overreacting? I don't. I think the perception is real, and we all know the administration, Neil, loves to blame the speculators, i.e. the traders, on driving the price up. But as you noted, they also drive it down. Listen, I think oil is definitely going up here over the next few weeks. On a daily basis, sure, it could be overdone. And it's not so much supply, like you said. It's a lot of the Syrian neighbors where a lot of the oil supply comes from. Any disruption over there? And oh, by the way, there's still some problems in Egypt near the Suez Canal. That can drive up price as well. And we should point out that the Suez Canal is where a lot of that Brent crude uh, traverses to get to Europe. But there is a direct correlation with oil prices here if they just rise in tandem, right? 100 percent. And, Neil, although the U.S. economy and the U.S. market as itself has started to be self-reliant in the sense that we're exporting more oil than we ever have, and certainly we're more reliable on some of the oil that we produce here with the fracking and the natural gas and so forth, the reality is this. Oil is a global commodity. It's a consumer consumed by all, and it's definitely influenced by tensions around the world. All right, Scott Martin, we're going to continue watching it closely. Thank you, my friend. All right, to John McCain on what is next. So the senator joins us out of Washington. Senator, what do you make of this and whether the markets are overreacting uh, to this? What do you think? Uh, Neil, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that uh, markets are very volatile in times of crisis. Um, uh, I know that the likelihood uh, of uh, any Egyptian government uh, shutting off the Suez Canal or remote uh, I went through the Suez Canal on the USS Forrestal when Nasser was uh, running Egypt. So, uh, but I, I can't, uh, honestly, I can't uh, predict the markets. Uh, I do know that this is extreme volatility throughout the Middle East, but it's not short term, it's long term. The conflict in Syria is spreading. Obviously, the unrest in Egypt is serious, but. Lebanon is destabilized. Iraq is unraveling. They've had more bombings and killings in the last month than they've had since 2008. The whole region is in a state of unrest, and that's because there is no policy and no strategy there in the Middle East. What do you think happens if we get involved in Syria, even through missile strikes? Um, and China and Russia have already said, bad idea. <clears throat> Does this escalate? Mm. I don't think so, because I don't think Russia or China will act in any way any more than they are. They're, they're vetoing resolutions in the U.N., but most importantly, the Russians are pouring weapons uh, into Syria to, for Bashar Assad to massacre people. Look, uh, I think it's 
it's obvious now, it's media reports, not any briefing that I got, but media reports that on Thursday they're going to launch attacks and they're going to last for three days. That's what's being reported in the media. The question is, will those attacks just be a retaliation and Bashar basically goes on uh, as normal, or will those attacks degrade his capabilities, particularly his air capabilities, which you could do easily with standoff weaponry, and start getting the weapons that people need, uh, General Idris and his people need, in order to reverse the momentum on the battlefield? If it's not that, then it's simply, uh, frankly, it'll be lead to a reduction in United States uh, credibility in the region. But if we do it right and reverse the momentum here, I think that it could uh, really have an effect in the eventual overthrow of a person who is clearly now a war criminal by using these weapons of mass destruction. And finally, we should not have been surprised. He's used them before. And uh, he will use them again if he thinks it's necessary to remain in power. So I take it, Senator, you dismiss Assad's claims that these are the rebels behind.